I just got a last minute call from Adidas and they want to give me a preview of an upcoming shoe. So it's time to hop on a plane and head to Nuremberg, Germany. This is a runner's weekend at the Adidas HQ. Yo, what's going on everybody? It is about two o'clock in the afternoon on a Monday here in Nuremberg, Germany. I came all the way here from Chicago to visit Adidas HQ. They're gonna show me some stuff that I'm actually not allowed to talk to you guys about yet. There's NDAs and embargoes and all that kind of stuff. But none of that secret stuff starts until tomorrow morning. I've got all of today to myself. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I really wanna take a nap because I'm super jet lagged. But this is my first time in Germany, my first time in Nuremberg. So I wanna go explore. And right now I'm running around the old city walls, which are magnificent. And then I got a couple of tips on places to go check out while I'm on my run today. So let's go for it. River that cuts through the city, and we're leaving the city center. We go out towards the west and then circle back on the other side. Got in a little bit more than nine miles on the run for today. Absolutely beautiful place to run. Lots of people were just enjoying the weather outside. It's a beautiful day now. And uh, I would have run longer, but I had to go to the bathroom and I couldn't figure out how to use the public water closet. So ended up cutting the run a little bit short, but it ended up being a good amount of running for the day. Now I'm gonna explore the town center over here a little bit more, maybe try and find some souvenirs for the girls and uh, just kind of see what there is to see. Nuremberg is a 1,000 year old city with beautiful architecture. The city feels clean and a bit touristy, but in a European kind of way, so it's not tacky. To my American eyes, the city alternates between looking like Arendelle and Bergentown, and overall, there is a surreal feeling to it all. The streets are mainly cobblestone and there are churches everywhere. During World War II, the entire city center was heavily bombed, which makes the stonework of this city feel that much more precious. Many of these buildings were built after the war, so there's quite a mix of old and new, although mostly the feeling is one of history. Yo, what's going on everybody? It is a little bit after eight o'clock here on a, I think today's Tuesday. I'm here in Adidas HQ. I'm in Germany. We're currently in the lobby, checking it out. Not sure how much I'll be able to talk to you guys about today, but I'm gonna try to take you along for as much as I can, narrate as much as I can, and show you as much as I can. There are some NDAs and some embargoes involved. I know you guys know how that goes, but so far this place is amazing, so hopefully I'll be able to show you a lot of what I'm about to see today.
that building over there is called arena that's where a lot of the corporate stuff is there's a track inside there that you can run inside amazing facility we only got to see it like a little bit of it so far but now we're walking outside heading over that way to laces that's where the brand sits so we're getting to explore all over and there's cameras everywhere these guys these guys so I'm trying not to ruin everyone's shot by narrating everything going on today so but we'll see <laughs> we'll, we'll do our best Apparently, this building is called Laces because from the sky, the white structures that run across the glass roof look like shoe laces. And I'm also told that even under a light rain, the sound from water hitting this roof is pretty incredible. Once we got into the building, we picked up some coffee from the company cafe and the camera crew that Adidas had hired for this event, of course, got some B-roll of that. And then with coffee in hand, we headed over into a meeting room where we got to meet a lot of the product team. And that's pretty much all I could say about that meeting right now. But from that meeting room, we then headed over to the track on campus and we hit the locker room so we can change into some new clothes and do a little bit of running. Getting a chance to run a couple laps at Adi Dossler stadium i gotta keep the shot really close because i'm wearing clothes that i can't really show you guys yet it's a six lane track right here on the adidas campus there's a beach volleyball pit on one end right here on the other side of the field pull up bars so you can torture yourself a little mini soccer pitch rock climbing wall over there All right, guys, just finished some filming at the track. Now I'm in the locker rooms. There's no one in here, so I can film in here today, I think. Where should it be? I think it's this way. Yeah, here's a locker room. Showers in here, too. There's a shower room. And there's some bathrooms in here as well. So here's just some bathrooms. Alright, came back in here because I need my watch. We're gonna head out for a run. I wanna make sure. I got everything I need. The Adidas campus is about a 20 minute drive outside of Nuremberg in a little town called Herzogenaurach. Although everyone just seems to call it Herzo. It's home not only to Adidas, but also Puma. And even though Adidas HQ employs about 8,000 people, they aren't even the biggest employer in this little town. That would be the Schaeffler Group. They make car parts, I think. But despite how much industry there is in this small space, Within a few minutes of running, we found ourselves in a bucolic setting that looked like it could be the subject of a 1,000 piece puzzle or a desktop background. And then the terrain changed quickly again and we were suddenly in a Bavarian forest, running through tall, tightly packed pines on an unseasonably warm winter's day. All this in a total route length of less than 10 kilometers. After the run, we got showered and cleaned up in the locker rooms, and then it was time to drop off the secret stuff and then head out to lunch. We're taking bikes to lunch, guys. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> These bikes are electric. They're really fun. <laughs> The 
The building for lunch, like every other space on the Adidas campus, is full of Adidas history on display. And in terms of food, you had a variety of options in a super modern and efficient space. I went with a pad tofu dish, some others opted for a curry, and no one got the pizza, even though that was available as an option. When we finished eating, we bust our own tables, further extending the IKEA vibe, and then we rode bikes back to Laces for our next meeting in the Innovation Lab. So we just walked through what they call the valley down here. Really fun workspaces and presentation space. And now we're heading deeper in inside. So we're currently in the lab where they do a lot of their product testing. They're having some discussions now as to what stuff they have to put away now that we're in here and with the cameras. So I'm gonna try to show you guys some stuff, but this is the place where they test the intersection between their technology and their athletes. So this is an important part of the testing. It goes beyond just the machine testing that they do in terms of durability and other types of performance metrics. But this is about like, how does it work in real life? So this is like a really cool, fun workshop. I'll try to show as much as I can. One of the things that they have in the lab is a treadmill with a force plate embedded in the deck. And the whole thing is surrounded by cameras. They say it's useful because it gives a lot of data at very precise speeds. But because of the difference between treadmill running and over ground running, they also have an area with a force plate embedded in the ground. I had a chance to run a few times through the force plate stage and it was very intimidating because not only was the film crew recording me going through that space, but the lab itself has about a dozen cameras watching my admittedly awkward foot strike. Unfortunately, I can't show you that much of this footage though. Now, in addition to the spaces they have for testing products in other sports, there's also a climate controlled room with a treadmill. It can be made cold, it can be hot, and there are wind tunnel sized fans at the front. Unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately, the room was currently undergoing service, so I couldn't be subjected to the extremes that this room can create. After the innovation lab, we had time for a pretzel and yet another coffee, and then it was time for our next appointment in a very unique space, the Adidas Archive. The Adidas Archive is a temperature and humidity controlled vault of over 40,000 pieces of Adidas history. To enter, you have to wear white gloves so that you don't get oils on any of the pieces of history you are about to touch. But that also meant that they were going to let us touch and hold the pieces of history. They started out with the very first Dostler Brothers spike, which looked more like a weapon than a track shoe. Jesse Owens competed in a track spike just like this one. And because of the craftsmanship and the efforts to preserve this original, it definitely does not look like a shoe that is almost 100 years old. Our personalized tour then continued to their first Adidas soccer boots with removable cleats. And then some of the first running shoes to feature synthetic materials rather than leather. And we saw more historical innovations in Adidas soccer and track and field shoes, including a soccer cleat using shark skin, and then the evolution of that into Edwin Moses' spike that featured a synthetic version for more outsole grip on the track. And because Adidas has always been about more than just shoes, we got to see some of the earliest running clothes, Olympic kits, and this, the Jeremy Scott Adidas collab pants if you can call them pants. There were also bags of timeless design that I thought could all be re-released today and look both retro and modern at the same time without a single stitch having to change. And then we ended on my favorite part, the world record breaking road shoes. Haile Gebri Selassie's record breaking shoe, Dennis Cometo's world breaking Adizero Adios 2.0, Press Jip Churcher's half marathon world record breaking Adios Pro and Senberry Teferi's 
5K world record breaking Takumi Sen. A record she set at an event right on the Adidas HQ campus here in Herzo. Oh, what a beautiful day out here, guys. Finished up getting that tour of the archive that was incredible. I haven't seen so much running history in one place before. Other sport history as well, but was, I was focusing on, on the running history. And now we're gonna get a little bit more of a broader tour of this entire campus. Yeah. There's so much here. It used to be all barracks, apparently. It used to be a military base. These are all now converted to office space. And man, communal workspaces, basketball courts over there. There was a slack line back that way, beach volleyball pit. It's like summer camp for grown-ups. The Adidas campus pretty much has everything. In addition to sports facilities, there's a kindergarten for employee families and a separate private lodging space for Adidas athletes and teams who are visiting. But the last place on our tour was this giant black building, which housed yet another impressive presentation space with, yes, even more Adidas history on display. And this wall, it's not just a video wall, but it's a video wall made of shoes. Very impressive. Through the hall was the Adidas Walk of Fame. Early track spikes, early soccer boots, a Billie Jean King tennis shoe, and a Patrick Ewing basketball shoe. Gang, gang. And then there was this, the Run DMC exhibit. This put a huge smile on my face. We even saw more soccer history, and then this Walk of Fame ended with a special gift. So that is gonna be it for my time here at the Adidas HQ. Such an impressive place, an expansive facility, a place of great history and innovation. I can't tell you guys about that stuff yet, but exciting stuff is in the works here. I can tell you that much for sure. One last thing I gotta do while I'm here. In total, I spent less than 48 hours in Germany, which is such a shame. I was only able to scratch the surface of all there is to see and do in this running obsessed city. And yet, the place has already left an indelible mark in my memory. How can a place become so ingratiated in such a small amount of time? Good food and good weather helps, but getting to meet great people who share a love of running that is a surefire way to imprint a memory. And I hope I will be able to return again soon. What's going on?